Um, okay, so I, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I don't really need to introduce uh, introduce Ben. He's the the author the or the the, the guy behind SoCal Tech. If you want to find out what's going on in technology entrepreneurship in Southern California, that's that's your first and last stop. Uh, he still manages. I think I'm pretty well connected, and he, he scoops me nine times out of ten. I'll I'll read a little email that something happened. I had no idea what was going on. Um, so Ben Ben now is a tradition for this speaker series where he comes in and tells us a little bit about the year that was. Uh, it's always been entertaining and informative, and I'm looking forward to hearing about 2017. Ben. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Let me plug myself back in so you can actually see what's going on. Just a second here. Great. Well, I uh, thank you. Uh oh. Maybe we'll we'll be plugged in. Well, thanks for kind of plugged in. Just a second here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should be, let's see, PC screen only, no, yeah, that's not going to work, typically, mm, that's great, okay, so we should be good, okay, hopefully we'll actually be able to do a slideshow here, um, okay, anyway, let's see here, slideshow, slideshow, there's always technical difficulties, when the technical guy gets up on the, trying to do a Light show here. I think it's duplicating the screen. Excuse me for a second here. Let's try this again. Anyway, so uh, people who don't know about who who here is a subscriber to SoCal Tech, first of all. Great. So there's a few people who aren't subscribers. Um, so if you haven't been to SoCal Tech, uh, it's a daily newsletter where I uh, and it's a website where you get a little bit of uh, all the news from in Southern California from uh, San Diego. Um, from all the way from uh, Santa Barbara to San Diego. And so if my, uh, looks like I have a uh, interesting screen issue here. Oh, there we go. Okay, hope that works. So um, if you haven't seen SoCalTech, oh, let's see here, maybe not. Um, so what, what I'm gonna talk about here, uh, so if you go to SoCalTech, there's a lot of resources. There's a calendar of events. There's all the deals you ever want to know about in Southern California. So there's a big database in the back, which is who's uh, gotten funding, uh, who the venture funds are, who are the executives at the company, um, and even fun things like how many ex salespeople are in a company. So it's a, hopefully a, a good resource for everyone. So I'm going to talk about this year. And uh, usually I go over all the deals, and uh, I've uh, uh, actually, uh, and I've ha put that out, but the big news for 2017 was the number of new venture capital funds. And so for those of you that are entrepreneurs, uh, I, I think everyone complains, hey, you know, Southern California is so hard to find an investor. And it, it, it's, it's interesting because this is something that uh, I've been doing this for a thousand internet years. Every year people go, oh, you know, I can't find investors. What's going on? Uh, this year, there were 15 new venture capital funds. Uh, some, some are new funds from existing investors, and some are brand new uh, investment funds. Um, and uh, that is probably a record. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that much, that many new funds and that many venture capitalists in Southern California ever. Um, it's, it's very unusual. Uh, how many people here have gone looking for money here in Southern California? So how many people here have done this, the Sand Hill Road uh, trip multiple times. So um, anyone who hasn't done that is the, the typical thing in, in Southern California is an entrepreneur says, hey, I need to raise money. And there's a few good groups down here who do that. But at some point, they want to raise more money. And they have to do the shuttle up to Sand Hill Road. And they do all the firms. And they have to go looking for money, especially uh, you know beyond Series A. And it's always the case where people go, oh, well, we, you know, we, we, we're interesting to talk to you, but why don't you move, to, move up to Silicon Valley? And how many people have done that? Anyone done that? <laughs> um, so, so it's great to have those local funds, uh, and it, it really does help uh, get more companies funded and started. Um, 
So here's some figures and, and facts. There were 18 new funds here in, uh, uh, in, in 2017. That includes uh, both people with new, new investment as well as, uh, as new companies in general. So that's a lot. Uh, these are some of the logos for those funds. Some of them are familiar. I think uh, people you know, are familiar with uh, Upfront Ventures. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, funds who, who have come out of the woodwork in, as well. So that is a lot of money. And um, if you, uh, if I'll, I'll actually go over a few of them and we'll talk about the numbers. But it's, it is uh, an interesting one because if, if you talk to me over the last 10 years, and anyone who's been an, an angel investor or venture investor here in Southern California, you, you know that usually there's only two or three funds that have money at any time, usually in Southern California. And I know there's a couple of uh, TCA guys in here, Tech Coast Angels, and it's always like, who's going who's gonna to fund that company beyond the angel stage? And it's always, oh, well, you know, those guys don't have money this year. We're going to go talk to another person. Or, well, those guys are, you know, only interested in soft. So right now, these, all these funds on here, and there's 18 of them, uh, not all the logos are here, are those funds all have new money, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, uh, that is probably the best situation that we've been in for the past 10 years. Even with a lot of success, a lot of stuff going on, the, the funds ha haven't been there like this uh, ever. Uh, there have been a couple, there were a couple of weeks uh, toward the end of the year where there were more venture, more venture funds announced than there were startups getting funding. So that is, that is a remarkable thing. So here are the biggest new funds in all of Southern California. Uh, number one is Upfront Ventures. They've been around for a while, but their latest fund is $400 million. Um, that is the biggest fund that has been uh, raised, I believe, in Southern California ever. And this is a follow-on fund, fund to all the other funds they've had. I think they have upwards of a billion dollars or more that, they've, uh, that they have under management. Um, that, that is all funding that is, is and, and a good, I think probably 70% of their deals are in Southern California. So anyone here with uh, money from Upfront? No, okay. Um, Graycroft, anyone know who Graycroft is? All right, Graycroft is another fun. Uh, Dana Sells uh, uh, kind of in charge of stuff here in Southern California. $250 million fund. That is another big fund. Um, I forgot to mention Upfront is, is very broad in terms of what they invest in. Um, they have a lot of interest in internet soft, and a lot of software. They even do content and, and e-commerce. That's pretty wide. Uh, with, with a big fund, obviously, uh, They'll invest in a lot of different things. Uh, Graycroft, uh, they do a lot of media deals. They do a lot of other stuff too, a lot of internet. Uh, how many people have heard, ever heard of Arrowroot Capital? Uh, one person. Yeah, so that's a fund with $177 million. And uh, I got to look again, but I believe that is uh, software investment money. Um, uh, there's a, a new fund that is, hadn't existed before, which is called Pontifax AgTech. And uh, this is actually something that might be interesting for Ventura County. Um, I think uh, Greg's run a couple of events where you're know, talking about uh, uh, w you know, one of the strengths of Ventura County is there's a big agriculture industry. And it's not often that those two intersect. Um, this fund is in LA, but they invest exclusively in technology that helps uh, increase, agri uh, that's related to the agriculture industry. Um, that is uh, interesting. Anyone, has anyone uh, gone and, and toured the, the tomato uh, hydroponics facility down in Camarillo? So there's a, there's a facility in Camarillo, which is the very largest uh, hydroponics um, facility in the western United States. And it's solar powered, and it has its own uh, power plant, and its own water purification plant. And there's a lot of technology behind agriculture. And that's the kind of things these guys are investing in. Um, Crosscut Ventures, anyone here funding from Crosscut? So Crosscut is, uh, has got a $125 million fund. Um, so these guys about, I think they started about six or seven years ago. And 
you want to talk, this is the, the startup that became a venture fund, or the venture startup fund. Their first fund, they basically said, we're going to start a venture, venture capital fund, but we have no, they, hadn't, uh, they didn't have any kind of track record. They had worked as very junior people in the venture industry for other people. And so they started asking for friends and family to invest in, in funds. And their first, their first fund was $5 million, which is, as a venture capital fund, that's kind of like uh, most of the venture investments are around $5 million. So they were like scraping for it. And I believe um, one of their first, uh, I don't remember which one of their uh, companies they invested in, but they, their first uh, one or two investments were phenomenal. And they've managed to, to get a lot of uh, success in their, their uh, uh, investments past that. And so now they're a $125 million fund, which is pretty, pretty healthy. Uh, Brian Steibel, uh, anyone know Jeff Steibel? No one knows this Jeff Steibel. One person knows Jeff Steibel. So um, there's a company called uh, Dun and Bradstreet Credibility. Anyone heard of Dun and Bradstreet Credibility? So these guys actually started, um, I think it was web.com. They took that public, then they bought uh, the whole business from Dun and Bradstreet, which uh, does business credit ratings. And um, they took that and built it into a much bigger business and sold it back to Dun & Bradstreet. Um, the, uh, if anyone's not, f anyone familiar with the Dun's number, D-U-N-S? So when you're a company, often people use that for credit. Uh, that business was actually started back, I think um, Abraham Lincoln worked for that business originally. And they bought that company and they r r turned it into an internet company. So not just providing all this, this information, they actually do web marketing and all the other stuff that you know, companies would like. And uh, so this $100 million fund, and you'll know the partner in the fund is Kobe Bryant. So <laughs> most of the people who have heard of Kobe Bryant, right? <laughs> so um, they actually had been managing his money in addition to their own money for uh, a number of years, and they formally announced that uh, uh, actually just at the beginning of the year. So uh, Core Innovation Capital is a financial technology firm, and if you have looked at what people are there, they invest in online lenders, they invest in many, many different things. And uh, they, they moved to, to the Los Angeles area specifically because we are now uh, one of the major capitals for financial technology firms. Uh, people say, hey, oh, well, is that in uh, Silicon Valley? Uh, is that in New York? These guys were in New York. They moved to Los Angeles because they said, we want to invest in companies in the fi financial technology area. So you know that's, that's great, and they have a brand new fund. So those are the biggest funds. Um, let me uh, look at my, uh, look at my, uh, grab this real quick, just so you have, so uh, let me tell you some of them, which I did not put in my presentation, just for, uh, for uh, fun here. Um, so, uh, talk about Wavemaker, anyone know the Wavemaker guys? $66 million fund. Um, it's mostly in, uh, in Southeast Asia. Ba they have an arm in Singapore. Um, but there's, they invest in uh, companies here in, in Southern California heavily. They're actually based in Santa Monica. The reason they're in Singapore is because of the tax breaks. <laughs> and the, the, the Singapore government gives them as much money as they put in. So if you're a company that wants to do international business, talk to these guys because if there's any kind of Asian play, they, they double your money, essentially, by putting the headquarters in Singapore, even though that you're here in L.A. Uh, Okapi's in uh, Orange County. Uh, there's a new entertainment fund. Uh, someone, I think, here was staying there in uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, Akutsaki, it's a, it's a Japanese fund, but they're, they're investing here in Southern California because of the, the uh, relationship to Hollywood. Uh, anyone heard of uh, FICA Ventures? Um, they are artificial intelligence. Anyone interested in artificial intelligence? Uh, machine learning. They are very, very focused. They, they're technologists. They really know what they're doing in that. Uh, they got $40 million. They haven't announced any investments yet. So they have $40 million in their pocket, and they're just waiting for the right company. Um, uh, hashtag one, anyone uh, uh, know Ryan Blair? Uh, for a while here, he, uh, he was the CEO of a direct... Uh, of a, a wireless internet service provider based in uh, Camrio called Sky Pipeline. And so he's a, uh, he made his money, believe it or not, on a, after that on nutraceuticals. <laughs> um, Moonshots Capital, 
they have uh, they have they have a bunch of money, but they haven't announced how, how much. Uh, anyone watch The Apprentice? Uh, uh, Kelly Perdue was one of the guys on The Apprentice, um, and oh, I was not supposed to mention politics, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, he um, he won the first season. He's uh, actually a good good guy, and uh, any, anything that's uh, uh, consumer internet, and if you have any background in the military, uh, he uh, he had pretty much takes a look at anyone who's a veteran. So. Um, Amplifies down in LA, they got more water tower, small fund. Um, there's two new funds, and uh, Ancona Capital, uh, Brian Messick, he's been in this industry for a while. Uh, they haven't announced how much, but they're doing early growth stage funds. And Bonfire Ventures, and uh, I think people here should know uh, Jim Andelman. Anyone know Jim Andelman? So uh, Jim is uh, in uh, Santa Barbara, and Mark Mullen, who's in LA, those guys have been in the LA venture ecosystem forever, and they have a big fund. They're not saying how much it is. I'm not sure if uh, uh, <laughs> if uh, if anyone else knows, but uh, they are definitely uh, they've they've invested in really really good companies. They they invested in the Trade Desk. How many people have heard of the Trade Desk? Anyone from Ventura? So uh, Trade Desk was one of the big IPOs uh, that we had. Um, they also invested in Edgecast. They were bought for like 400 million dollars by uh, Verizon. So um, anyway, some of the funds here. So that is the big news for um, for uh, Southern California's uh, venture funds. And so now I get to uh, bring back, uh-oh, try to bring back my uh, slideshow. Two seconds, any questions real quick? Okay, much better. Okay, so let's talk about funding. Funding for 2017. So here are the biggest deals for the Los Angeles area as a whole, and I, that, that includes, so this is from Santa Barbara to, to LA, not including um, Orange County and not including, um, uh, not including most of Orange County and not including San Diego. So these are the biggest uh, deals. FAIR is a new, how many people know who, um, uh, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so um, FAIR is, uh, I look at so many companies every day. I write articles all the time. It always, I always miss a skip. If I get, so um, is uh, car, in the car industry. And Scott Painter at uh, True Car is the founder of Fair. And so uh, they got a billion dollars, which is a lot of money, uh, from, from BMW um, and, and, uh, and Penske Automotive. So uh, uh, the Penske family, anyone uh, watch NASCAR? Penske? Okay, um, so so they got it because they have a new uh, uh, auto lending company, and what it is is you take your phone out and you say I want a car, and you pick the car, and they get it to you, and they give it to you on a monthly subscription. So no long term lease. Um, it, it's the idea is that you uh, and they're only used cars, so you actually pick used cars. They buy it for you. You don't pay financing fees. All you do is pay a monthly fee. And the idea is you want to, they're trying to get people who don't want to go through the hassle. Um, they, they're trying to cut, cut a lot of the middlemen out. And uh, so that's, that's an interesting one. Um, Scott also started Cars Direct. Anyone looked at Cars Direct? Um, True Car, obviously a lot of people have heard of. So this is, you know, I think the third or fourth company he's, uh, he's running the car industry. Uh, the next one is Magento. Uh, anyone here run an e-commerce site? So Magento is a big uh, e-commerce uh, provider. So uh, for any website that you go to, aside from Amazon, you have a shopping cart. And these guys are one of the companies that does the shopping carts in the back, is you click on buy, and, uh, and, and that's what they do. So that's $250 million, private equity company called Hill, Hill House. Um, they used to be, they were owned by somebody else, and part of this was to buy them, buy them out and make them independent. Um, ring, how many people have a ring installed? All right, so most people know what a r ring is, is a, a, a video doorbell. And uh, they, they uh, it's interesting. So when ring started, um, again, this is a, I think it was a Shark Tank company again, um, is they, uh, uh, the founder is Jamie Simonoff. And he has had a bunch of uh, startups here in LA. And the, it's a video doorbell. So when you go to a door, you, you ring the doorbell, and there's a little camera that captures it. And so if you're sitting here and you have a ring, if you, uh, if you go to uh, uh, someone's house with a ring here and you ring the doorbell, they actually get a, an alert on their phone. And they can go, oh, hey, look, I got a package from the U UPS guy. Or, 
or oh hey Doe's here and you can actually answer the their doorbell and you can uh, see who's there and you can use it as a security camera there's a lot of features and it's dead simple um, the funny thing is when they started I was going not another gadget company and if you uh, if you knew how many people do security cameras before that there are like you know a dozen in the US and there are you know three dozen in China doing cheap knockoffs and you go how can they succeed and they they have really really um, this morning they announced a uh, uh, a whole deal with Shaquille O'Neal so Shaquille the Shaq is now their spokesperson <laughs> and it's because it's so simple to use right you plug it in um, and you really don't have to do much you, you know the most of the things on the market before then where you had to put in IP addresses and know the magic sauce and these guys you plug it in and it all, almost always work so um, uh, Sir Richard Branson's an uh, investor in them um, uh, Branson has been investing in a lot of LA companies so and both small big and small um, so that's that's an interesting one um, CrowdStrike is actually in Irvine but I mentioned them because cybersecurity is a big area that is growing uh, 100 million dollars um, and March Capital Partners is active. Uh, how many people know uh, March Capital? Uh, uh, how many people know Clearstone? Wow. Okay. So um, uh, they are one of the funds that have been around in LA for the longest time. Clear, Clearstone was, and the guys who are there are now um, are bound, bound up with others to March Capital Partners, and um, and uh, so they're cybersecurity. Virgin Hyperloop One, how many people have heard of Hyperloop One? Everyone's got to have heard of Hyperloop One? No one's, some people haven't heard of Hyperloop One? Okay, so Hyperloop One, how many people have heard of Elon Musk? Elon Musk, okay. So Elon Musk, uh, uh, a few years ago said, I have this great idea of transporting people in essentially a giant pneumatic tube from you know, city to city at hundreds of miles an hour. He says, but I'm not gonna start this company because I don't have the time to do this. But I'm gonna write up this little white paper and I'm not going to patent it so our patent lawyers can go, oh my gosh. And, and so, so he said, I put it out there. And so the whole bunch of companies started to go build out this uh, Hyperloop idea. And one of them is Hyperloop One. And uh, they're in LA and they started, uh, started working on their product. Um, and uh, most recently they got $85 million. And, uh, and Sir Richard Branson now is on the board and I think he's running the stuff, uh, the, the shots. Um, there's a lot of Silicon Valley investors there. Uh, Shervin Pishavar is a big uh, venture capitalist who was there. He just got kicked out because of uh, interesting. <laughs> anyone, anyone following <laughs> Inside Dirt on that one? Um, uh, he was a one, he was a, I think he uh, he had a Me Too uh, experience. So um, the uh, that that company uh, is a is an interesting one. Uh, as in, there's a few companies. And th this 85 million is the latest in, I think they've raised 500 million dollars or something like that. Um, big plays, a lot of big names, but you, you kind of like, where's their product and how long is this going to take? So um, goes in the category of electric cars. So uh, you can't see this here, but um, there's a company called Rocket Lab. It's called, uh, um, and you can't see it, this little rocket right here. But, uh, and that is people out of SpaceX. So there's a group of engineers that came out of SpaceX and they're developing their own rocket. And everyone's seen SpaceX. Anyone who did not see the SpaceX launch uh, in December? That was not aliens. <laughs> Even though uh, Elon Musk did post something. Hey, do you think it was a UFO or do you think it was a SpaceX launch? And more people said UFO than SpaceX launch. And I guess some people thought it was North Korea. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Rocket Lab is doing sp small rockets, so their idea is not to launch gigantic things into space, but small things into space. So right now, satellites, there's things called CubeSats, and they're very small satellites, and they're, in fact, I think they're six inches by six inches or something like that, and the, the big trend is to send little satellites up that are very cheap. They're made out of Arduinos and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so the idea is you can send a lot of them up to space, even if they fail, well, it's not such a big deal. So that's their target. And they're trying to differentiate from SpaceX. SpaceX is, is sending up traditional payloads, which are very large product things. And their next thing, um, any day now, I forgot to look today to see what their launch date is, is SpaceX is sending up uh, Falcon Heavy, which is the biggest, biggest rocket ever developed since the uh, 
Apollo missions. So uh, it is, uh, uh, and I think Elon Musk, the, the first, SpaceX's first uh, mission is he's going to send a Tesla, tes a red Tesla, I don't even know which one, which, which one it is, Roadster to Mars. So these guys are not doing that, they're doing small, small things. Um, Honest Company, how many people heard of Honest Company? Ah, okay, so Honest Company raised $75 million uh, from fid Fidelity Management and Research. So uh, if anyone was here last year, I put them on the list of potential exits. And uh, they haven't exited yet, um, but uh, you can kind of tell what's going on with companies sometimes by who is funding them. Anytime you see Fidelity Management and Research, how many people have, know what Fidelity is, right? Fidelity Brokerage Account? Yes, anytime you see Fidelity or uh, T. Rowe Price or Goldman Sachs uh, in, in a company, you can almost guarantee they're, they're on the road to an IPO, right? So uh, I forgot to mention that with Ring, is Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs will not invest in your company because you've got a Series A funding for a new device. They only invest in your company if you're making a lot of money and they think that maybe you might be having an I IPO soon. So that's a, a good hallmark for that. So uh, that's the biggest funds in the LA area. Now, good news, a lot of money. Bad news is uh, last year I put this list up. Anyone remember last year? And we had a bunch of companies in San, um, from Santa Barbara down to, to just along the 101 quarter. And there's none of those this year. So that is the, the bad news about the big deals. So what kind of in investments did people put in for all of Southern California? So I stress this out a little bit because the other list is kind of uh, 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 representative of the LA area. And this is more just in general in Southern California for an idea of how much money is going where. And uh, this is good, I think, for us along this corridor. Uh, medical devices, biopharmaceuticals are number one and number two. They always tend to be on, on, on top because of the amount of money that's put in. But uh, it's uh, good to know that, especially anyone here, anyone here from Amgen or, or from the biomedical. I know, I know Greg's at least in the... <laughs> there's, a, there's a few people here. But uh, there's definitely money there if you're in the right area. Um, you'll notice that medical devices are much higher than less than biopharmaceutical, bleh, biopharmaceuticals. And the reason why is because the whole issue with um, approvals, FDA approvals, and devices are still a lot easier to get approved than uh, pharmaceuticals are. Uh, number three is software. I know there's a lot of software people. Uh, that one has been a big strength of uh, Southern California, believe it or not. Um, it's interesting because it's nice that we have a lot of these new venture funds because they kind of understand where the investments are in Southern California. When you talk to people from Silicon Valley, uh, invariably the first thing the, the VC says is, oh, do you work in Hollywood? And you can see that down in the content media games area, it's only, uh, it's way down there at number six. And I'll tell you that probably 95% of those are video games. So if, you're, if you've got some hot content something startup, um, unless it's got technology involved, it's a small percentage. Um, services, electronics is, is higher. So uh, this is the strength of the 101 corridor, by the way, electronics. How many people have worked for an electronics company in, in some, uh, here on the 101 corridor? Very, very, it's, a, it's actually a strength uh, along the 101 corridor. The last few years, this number has been tiny, extremely small. And it has become hot. And part of this reason is companies like Ring, companies like Sonos. How many people know about Sonos? Sonos makes speakers. Santa Barbara, very, very, uh, done very, very well. Um, so there's been a resurgence in the electronics industry. So if you have a device, say you have a, uh, in fact, we just had a pitch about that, right? If you had a, something that involves hardware, all of a sudden, anything that's, you know, anything with the makers, it's actually seen a resurgence. And I think that's because People understand, you know, for a while people go, oh, software is the way, to, way to, to make a lot of money. But they also realize now that sometimes you need a device that kind of keeps people locked into what you're doing. Um, scientific equipment's actually pretty high. Um, that is another area I think that, that the quarter has here, 101 quarter has a lot of uh, interest. And energy is still up there, but it's a lot smaller than a few years ago. Uh, if anyone looked at uh, 20... 15, I think we had a billion and a half in energy investments. 
and that has dro dropped off uh, quite a bit. Um, you know, I think uh, people still have interest, but uh, the you know all of these things go up and down, and so not as many solar startups, not as many uh, uh, alternative energy, and 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 I didn't mention the uh, some of that energy money was in uh, electric car startups, and there are not very many of those left. So exits. So uh, before I go into exits, is anyone remember last year for exits? I should bring up the slides here. Last year, uh, all the exit, almost all the exits were from Santa Barbara and Ventura County. Um, it was a huge year for us uh, in terms of exits, and uh, we we had I think more IPOs than anyone else did. Uh, which is uh, interesting. Uh, in 2017, unfortunately, not so much. Um, these are all in the area. Uh, the biggest one is Snap. They raised uh, $3.4 billion, $11.25 billion market cap. They are not worth that much now. Anyone know what they're worth now? I didn't look today. A lot less. So <laughs> um, Snap, Snap's one of those. They, they uh, went to market with very little revenue, a lot of hype, and they're now hurting. Um, I, I don't know if anyone's uh, uh, seen the reports, but uh, they said, we don't make software. Snapchat, yeah, that's, that's the thing we do for fun. We're a camera company. They started selling uh, 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 glasses that took pictures and put them on Snapchat. How many people own a, one of those glasses? Oh, come on. Oh, we got one. All right. Um, Oh, okay. So uh, they said, "Hey, we're uh, we're a, we're now a device company. That we make these cool glasses that you can take. I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 second uh, snaps, uh, videos, and put them on automatically. Uh, they were only sending, selling them at limited time. Uh, um, these uh, vending machines. They move them every day. Uh, eventually, they opened up a couple stores. But the problem is, no one's buying them, and they have an entire warehouse full of them that no one wants." So uh, that's why Snap's uh, not doing too well. Uh, Alteryx, anyone heard of Alteryx? Um, yeah, so uh, analytics software. Um, they only raised $126 million, but worth uh, $1.3 billion. Um, that one came out of a, a, uh, an incubator, actually, where all they do is uh, incubate uh, data analytics companies. Um, so if you're doing machine intelligence, artificial intelligence, uh, that's been an area that's done very well. Uh, SendGrid, anyone heard of SendGrid? So um, SendGrid is, uh, is actually split between Boulder and Orange County. Uh, everyone thinks they're a, uh, a uh, Boulder company, but actually they were founded in, in Orange County by an engineer. Um, and they had a great IPO. They make email software. So if you run a company like Uber or, uh, or Snapchat or whatever else, uh, you've got to send emails. So everyone's gotten the email that says, oh, you signed up for our service. Please click here to confirm your email. And then every week they send you send you another email saying, "Oh, you logged in ten times," or "Oh, you know, Joe Joe sent you a message on Facebook." All of those are done by backend companies. Uh, this backend company, SendGrid, and what they do is they've they've taken and outsourced all the hard lifting it takes to send an email. So most people, when you send an email, it's very hard to get delivery. And I know this because our our website we send an email every morning about six o'clock, um, and Trying to get emails to people's uh, inboxes nowadays is very difficult. Everyone says, oh, you're spam, or there's the wrong keyword. Um, for a while, I could not, um, I could not mention uh, any LA sports team without the emails being rejected by every large company. <laughs> so you put Dodgers in your email, and all of a sudden it bounces back saying, this is prohibited content in this company. And even worse in, in our industry, industries here is you put... Um, you put a gaming company, right? A video game company, and those got rejected as well because the car company. So SendGrid handles all that, makes it so it uh, it is a trusted source for email, and they get through better, not 100%, but better. Um, uh, Sienna Pharma Biopharmaceuticals, pharm pharmaceuticals company, and uh, and then uh, Veritone, which uh, I don't even remember what they do. But that's the exits. So the exits are different. I should pull up last year's list. Uh, our 2016's list, which was all us. This is kind of spread out. So what's next? And I, uh, I always use this background here. This is from a maker. How many people have been to a maker fair? 
Okay, you gotta go to a maker fair sometime, which is the maker movement is a big thing now, which is people wanna build things, right? They don't wanna just buy stuff off the shelf. They wanna take and make their own circuits. They wanna make their own hardware. They wanna build something. In fact, uh, if, if you look, go in and out, um, the Hub 101 has a great 3D printer right out front. I think <laughs> Dave was uh, making something on there earlier. But uh, yeah, so it's a great, great thing to see what people are doing. And here's what investors are looking for. So, uh, oh, so I forgot to mention, of all these things in here, exits and successes, is Bitcoin. How many people read about the, uh, the guys who, uh, who are like Bitcoin billionaires from their Facebook, uh, what, are the, what are the guys' names? Uh, yeah, Winklevoss guys. So those guys are small potatoes compared to all the folks in Southern California. Um, there's a group of probably uh, a dozen investors in Southern California who are, are probably the majority holders of Bitcoin. They will not tell you, but they are multiple, multiple, multiple billionaires right now, depending on how much, you're, how much Bitcoin you're mining on your phone. How many people are mining Bitcoin on the phone? Nobody's mining Bitcoin. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, how many people know what Bitcoin is? Okay. So Bitcoin being a cryptocurrency um, is, is really hot right now. And um, uh, of course, the only problem is that you're uh, burning down the entire world for your Bitcoin. <laughs> but but it's, 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 a, it's a very, uh, very hot commodity now. There's a lot of investors, including a lot of investors in the venture funds who are in Bitcoin here in Southern California. In fact, there's, there's more Bitcoin uh, billions in, in probably up and down the coast here in Southern California than anywhere else in the world. So um, that is a very hot area. Uh, there's a lot of startups in that area. Anyone heard of uh, Science Inc. company in Santa, Mar uh, Santa Monica run by Mike Jones, who used to be the CEO of uh, MySpace. And they have switched their entire model to investing in Bitcoin-related technology. So that's called blockchain. Um, and also, there's a lot of other companies, too. So that's the number one thing that I've heard from investors, uh, talking to investors, is they're kind of looking at Bitcoin. Um, number two is artificial intelligence, machine learning. How many people are here? AI, machine learning. And uh, how many people don't know what AI and machine learning is? So. Uh, Machine learning, AI is a big thing now. Um, it, you know, I, 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 I got a degree in electrical engineering a while ago, not too much long ago, but, but uh, it used to be that artificial intelligence and machine learning were a very theoretical area, right? There's all these cool things you could do, but in order to do them, you would set up, oh, hey, we could automatically figure out what you're gonna buy next, but we need to throw it in the computers and next week we'll know. Right? So processing time and storage are such now that these companies are everywhere. And it doesn't take them days. And storage is so cheap that they can take all that data. Right now, um, uh, you know, if you, are surfing, if you are surfing the internet and clicking on car, uh, looking for a car, in, 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 I mean, how many people here on Facebook have had that ad which you go, why is that ad there? I mean, are they following me around? Yes, they are. Anyway. <laughs> So that is machine learning and, uh, and uh, artificial intelligence in the works. What's happening is all that data is coming in from what you're surfing, where you're going, and that data is being processed using artificial intelligence. So it's using a lot of algorithms rather than people specifically saying, if he clicks on, on this, this spot, then he's interested in cars. It's like, oh, well, this, you know, it figures it out by itself. And if you're a company in an artificial intelligence or or machine learning right now, it's a, it's a very, very interesting area to investors. So I think uh, when I talk to, uh, to investors, and I do it all the time, that's one area. They, if you've got that company, talk to it. The funds that I mentioned earlier, at least half of them have said specifically they're looking for machi uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence companies. Um, that also falls into uh, self-driving cars, um, drones. There's a lot of companies all related to that machine intelligence, artificial intelligence area. Um, three, virtual reality, which uh, if you do anything in virtual reality, there's a lot of interest in that from investors. Um, it's still early in that industry. Um, there's not a lot of investments there, but uh, if you talk to investors, that is an area they're, they're very interested in. Whether you're, not so much if you're creating content, but if you're developing technology behind that. Uh, financial technology and lending. Um, 
this was one of the most active areas in, in 2017 for investors. And uh, I, I can't, I should pull up the list, but uh, there are a lot of companies doing something to do with lending. Lending to people who don't have, uh, don't have bank accounts as big, unbanked people. There's uh, lending in, the, in other countries. There's transferring money between the US and other countries. There is uh, banking software. It is a huge area for, for funding. Um, in fact, uh, how many people here know Blackline down the street, Calabasas? Blackline is an accounting software company. And they have had huge success. Uh, in, in fact, uh, that, that area has had a lot of interest. Because I think people realize it's very, very key. Financial software is very key. It's, if you're not an accountant or, 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 or someone finances, you go, well, what's all this stuff? But there's really been kind of a revolution. Because again, storage and processing power. All this stuff used to be a lot, very hard to do. Um, in, in the area of financial technology, cloud really has enabled stuff. So uh, if, you're, if you're a startup, look at that, that as well. Um, marketplace is always big. Um, I, I put up the, uh, the list of all the marketplace companies maybe a couple years ago. Um, it's still a big area. Airbnb, right? Airbnb and Uber. Anything to do with uh, connecting people in a non-traditional way through a marketplace. Uh, those are also still big. If you talk to investors, uh, they are still very interested in those. Um, the reason why is because uh, there's really been a, a revolution in terms of thinking of how people interact and how people look for, for things. In fact, um, uh, you know, I think it, it's, it's good and bad depending on where you are, but uh, it used to be you would go through your, if you're a big company, you'd go through your corporate travel guy and you'd you would uh, book the hotel they want, and then you would go and, and uh, you know, get transportation however they did. Nowadays, they're actually starting to say, hey, well, yeah, you can Airbnb it, or you can, you can use Uber to get here and there. Uh, that's an area that's really taken off. And every single new name and area uh, of life that you do something, uh, it's almost for sure there's a marketplace there. Um, MindBody, how many people know about MindBody? Uh, MindBody is uh, San Luis Obispo. They're doing, they're kind of doing that for the spa space. Um, in fact, there's a couple of TCA guys. I don't know if you guys invested in them or not. They had an IPO and, um, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, MindBody was uh, uh, one, of, one of them that's done very well. So that's, that's a great area. Esports, and that's an area here. How many people here are esports video players? Really? Oh, come on. Um, so uh, that is, you know, all those times you say, you know, why don't you, so if, I know a lot of people this, uh, are of the age where you've got kids. You go, stop sitting on the couch and playing video games because there's nothing you can do with video games. Well, guess what? They are now, uh, they have now officially started uh, eSports leagues. There's a big one called the Overwatch League that was started by Blizzard Entertainment. And you can be a professional video game player. And... Uh, uh, so you're, nowadays, some of your kids can say, no, I can become a professional video game player. Stop bugging me, Dad. <laughs> and then I, I mentioned a little about drones. Drones are UAV aerospace. Another, uh, another big thing, uh, we have more, uh, when I first started uh, SoCal Tech a thousand years ago, a thousand internet years ago, um, we were coming off a big crash. Southern California was, was like no more aerospace, everyone was being laid off. And people said, oh, that's it. And it's all back. And you can thank Elon Musk for that. Uh, Elon Musk, of course, with SpaceX, has been so success successful. Anything in the aerospace area, unmanned vehicles, anyone know AeroVironment in Monrovia? Right? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of drone companies. There's a drone mapping company, which I forget the name of, um, in, in Santa Monica. Those areas are very, very interesting. In fact, um, the, uh, the guys over at AeroVironment just did a deal with SoftBank. And they are doing um, what are called long-term drones. And so instead of launching a satellite into space, what they're doing is they're taking these drones that will hover at very high elevation over an area. And so you don't have to have a satellite, which costs a lot of money, and you've got to send it up in space and rock it. It's got a drone which is solar powered. And all it does is sit there and go in circles. And uh, so that's a way to, to do a lot of those things like sat phones and and what name, what have you. So that's, that's the areas people are looking. 
Um, if you've got a startup, a uh, certain idea, doesn't mean that if you're a startup doing something else may not make, you, you, you can still get funding, but this is the area the investors are looking at right now. So, questions, any questions, comments? Yes. It is both more blockchain than Bitcoin, yes. Yeah, it's the technology under not, underneath uh, Bitcoin. Any other questions? Yes. Correct. So, so the disconnect is the, the local investors. So, so there's always a disconnect between biotech and biopharma and what investors are looking for. And the reason why is because there's a set of biopharmaceutical and biomedical com uh, uh, medical device investors. And that's all they do is focus on bio, uh, biopharmaceuticals and medical devices. And that number goes up and down. And depending on how well they've done, that, the amount of money that goes in goes up and down. But the guys, everyone else, the number of funds, it doesn't really change. Because these guys, the new funds, don't go ask them for, uh, for a biomed investment. Because they'll look at you and they'll scratch your head. And they'll go, protein what? And what is RNA? What's DNA? You know, remind me again. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so I didn't break down the numbers, but I can tell you the new funds uh, are evenly split, split between early stage and seed stage funds and late stage funds. There's really two, two class of investors. The, the area you have problems are kind of the middle. So if you have a brand new startup, uh, you've, you've got a few customers, maybe you're in the, you can't be an idea company ever, you have to be a product company. But early on, seed, A, there's a lot of funds there, especially the smaller ones. Um, if you have a company that's got five million in revenue, ten million in revenue, um, that's the other class of company, and you can get funding. It's the part in the middle that's a little tough, right? The the B's, C's. I don't know anyone else comment on that, but uh, it's where you've gotten funding, you've got your product going, kind of need to build it, and there's not as many people doing that here. Uh, I don't. Uh, but if you are, feel free to approach me because there's a, there's a lot of people in the room and elsewhere who, 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 uh, who do, do help in that area. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really the news source of like what's going on and if you want to have an idea of, of who's doing what. You know, that's, that's, if you go to my website and you want to know who's active, um, and if, if you are servicing this uh, industry, if you are somebody who's looking for clients, uh, that's a great way to use our database is there's a lot of people who use that to figure out who's getting funding, uh, obviously, if you are doing payroll services, or you're doing, you're selling IT equipment, or you're, you know, doing something, that's our back end is very useful for that to figure out who's who's got the money because obviously they need to have money and funding before they'll buy anything. Yes. Yeah, you know what? If you if you look at our uh, website and, uh, and I mean what we go over over the, and it changes all the time. So that's the hard part about all this. So every every year I think, hey, it's going to be the same as it was last year. In my presentation, I go, oh, I can't reuse anything. <laughs> it's all different. So yeah, it's, it changes. So. So, so the, the rule of venture capital, and anyone who wants to contradict me can go ahead, is people invest in things that are close to them. So if you are looking for funding, going to New York is very bad because uh, unless you have a lot of relationships, because they're not going to want to get on a plane for a board meeting and sit there for five hours or whatever it is um, to go. The, people want to invest in things that are close to them. That way they can stop in your office on Friday and go, well, Bill, why, uh, why haven't you guys uh, shipped that product yet? Um, uh, you know, they want to they have an idea of what's going on. And they want to know you, too. So they, you invest in people that you know, right? Um, so, so they're going to be doing value. And, and most of these investors, 
uh, are not going to take that uh, business plan that you, you emailed to them at 2 a.m. They're going to take the business plan that you handed to the attorney that they trust that happens to know you as well. And, and that, that attorney said, uh, yeah, you could talk to these guys and, 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 or the, the accountant or the, you know, what have you, somebody in the, in the, in the circle that they trust. And so that's why it ends up being local. Uh, it actually doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, artificial intelligence for during product. If you've got the talent here, it doesn't. It really doesn't matter where you're located. They're looking for the for the products. Uh, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and venture investors from Silicon Valley, and I know that we often in this area, it's people go, oh, you know, they wring their hand, uh, their hands over whether or not we can compete with Silicon Valley or not. It doesn't matter. Um, look at companies like MindBody. They're in San Luis Obispo. You don't think there's going to be a high-tech company in San Luis Obispo at all. I mean, when you say San Luis Obispo to me, I go, see the cows, oil, something like that, right? They were very successful. Um, you look at uh, all the companies out of Boulder and Denver, and you, don't, you would never think there's high-tech companies there. So it doesn't matter where you are if you've got the talent. So if you understand the market and you know what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you're here or whatever. The, the downside of Silicon Valley, and this is a huge one that people understand, is you cannot hire somebody in Silicon Valley. You cannot hire somebody. So, so every single startup I talk to that's moved from Silicon Valley here, the problem is they go, hey, I've got a great startup. I'm going to go hire 10 engineers. And the problem is they go to engineer number one. And the engineer number one says, oh, how much do you want to pay me? And they say, oh, we've got $100,000. And you get a whole, all this e equity. They go, well, Google is going to give me $200,000 and all this equity. Oh, OK, fine. Number two, engineer number two, they say, hey, you want to come work for us? They said. Well, you know, Oracle has this offer for me. And so that's the, the, the story in Silicon Valley. So we're, we actually have an advantage. If you can find the talent here, um, there's just not the same kind of pressure. Yes? Predictions. Um, well, I think uh, you will see a lot more uh, funding this year. Uh, 2017, even though we had all these funds, was not a very big funding year for startups in general. Um, it was a, there was a lot of activity, but compared to prior years, there's not, not a lot of activity. But because of the venture funds, I put that huge list up, they are going to have to make investments. You can't be a venture fund and not make investments. So you're going to see a lot of seed level deals. You're going to see a lot of investment, a lot more in the, than in the past. Um, the other thing is I think uh, uh, the Bitcoin guys are, are also sitting on a lot of money. It's, I'm not sure how we're going to see those investments. Um, it's kind of difficult. Uh, how many people here actually have seen what an uh, initial coin offering is, ICO? It's very esoteric. And it, if you've never seen one before, it, it's not like a venture deal, right? They go, oh, we have an ICO, and they raise money, and you go, well, is that a venture deal, or what is that, right? So uh, those are very interesting. There's a lot of those that are going to happen, and I'm not, not even sure how we're going to cover them yet. So, question? Right. Right. Yes, there are a lot of them. <laughs> um, so, so I know one of the big investors in LA who, um, who has a joke about how uh, his, uh, his significant other almost threw away um, a, like 100,000 uh, like 100, Bitcoin. <laughs> it was on a store on a hard drive. So I don't know what that number is, 100,000 Bitcoins times whatever it is now. It's a lot. And it, that was just a small fraction of his holdings. Um, and... Uh, that's an issue. Uh, another, uh, how many people here know Michael Turpin? He's a big Bitcoin guy. He's a, he's a LA guy. Made a lot of money um, at a company called MarketWired. Um, and he, uh, he actually had his phone taken over, his computer taken over <laughs> by people trying to get to his Bitcoin. Because everyone says, he's a big investor. So um, there's definitely issues there. But uh, I will have to say it is a little bit like Vegas because of the way the money, the Bitcoin's been going. So people are just going, hey, I'll try, give it a try, or do this and that. So it, if, you, if you enjoy uh, betting on black and red, then you will enjoy Bitcoin.
<laughs> so, so I'm going to stop it there, partly because, OK, so who's heard of Bitcoin? Raise your hands. Who can explain it? We have one. OK, for the rest of you, uh, this, is another, this is a product that was, that was conceived by Hub 101 member. Alon Gordon, who knows Alon from 805 Startups? A lot of people know Alon. So his wife uh, asked him, please explain Bitcoin to me. And he did. And she said, no, no, please explain Bitcoin to me like I'm a baby. <laughs> So he, he simplified it and she said, all right, now I get it. And then they decided, why don't we make a, a book out of this? So they called a, a relative as a graphic artist and they created Bitcoin for Babies. <laughs> uh, it's available on Amazon for some obscene price, considering it's just a picture book. The cool thing about it is you put it out on your coffee table and people pick it up and leave through the pages and they say, I still don't understand it. And you can tell them that's because you're not a baby. Uh. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's thank Ben for that wonderful presentation. So we, we give blankets to our speakers, assuming that they're never coming back. So unless you have a dream to build like the biggest blanket fort in the world, which you might, um, we're, we're, we're going to give you instead, this is a Nine Bluetooth speaker. Uh, Nine actually, it, the company's based in Westlake Village. Uh, CEO, uh, his name is Armin Arami. And uh, Armin was a, a, a judge at our new venture competition last year. He generously donated some speakers. So we'd like to, for you to have this local product. So thank you very much.